Ahoy! The Smite Pro League started again this weekend, and with that, we have a lot of interesting information. We have interesting strategies, picks, items, and everything being used. And I figured we're going to dive into that a little bit and look at what is applicable for us as non-competitive players, what we can use from that in our own games, and what we can generally learn from what the pros are doing. In the same breath, we're also going to look a little bit at the picks and bans and see how the pro scene differs from our games in that regard. In order to keep the background footage spoiler free, we're starting from the start of the game there as well. Let's get right into the bans. The most popular ban is Tiamat, who was banned 8 times and is consistently in the first 3 bans. This should come as no surprise to anyone who's been following pretty much any pro on Twitter or watching their streams, because Tiamat is very valued at a high level of play. Not only because of her damage output, but also because of her control of the map with the Serpents. The next two high priority bands that are also usually banned in the first three are Yemoja and Athena. Athena here is also not surprising, she has very high map control, she is good in three roles right now and the buffs really pushed her a little bit over the top and I suspect that she might get some nerfs sooner or later. Yemoja is a lot more banned than she would be in ranked, that is because Yemoja only really works well on the highest level of play and she is a very hard to play character that also works best into specific comms with specific allies. So Yemoja is the first one here would say the bans will probably not increase by the same degree on non-competitive levels of play. Tsukiyomi got 5 bans, also high priority ban, also not really a surprise, they're still a very well performing character. Keep in mind that the pros are playing on patch 8.4, so the nerfs from 8.3 bonus balance are already applied. I thought they would have some degree of impact on him, but clearly they didn't. Yumi and Radatasker were also banned 4 times each, which is significantly more than you would expect from them based on their ranked win rate, but it's worth keeping in mind that some of these bans may also primarily be target bans. Set got 3 bans, but he got through quite a few times as well. And the same for Sobek, who was valued a fair bit more in the SCC, where he was basically always banned. Then there's Cerberus, who also got 3 bans. And then we have some guards that just had 2 bans. Erlang Shen, Guan Yu, Janos, Sun Wukong, Fenrir, Morrigan, Thor, Heimdall and Apollo. And then we have guards with single bans, which I don't think are worth talking about at this point yet. But what is worth talking about is the selection of guards being banned here. Because among them are Athena, Redditosker, Janus, Thor, Apollo, and also Chernobog, who got a ban as well. So what we can see is that there is a very high prioritization for global ultimates at the moment. Global picks are consistently banned and seem to be valued a fair bit higher on the larger map in competitive. And this is something that I think translated over to ranked, especially initially, but has dropped off a little bit since. Not for all gods, some are very valued in ranked still, but some of them are fairly less popular in comparison and maybe we'll see a bit of a rise of them again. And now let's move over to the picks and playstyles in the individual roles. So worth mentioning that there is no official list or anything from Hyrus, I hand counted all of these picks and bans, so if there are any minor mistakes, uh, please forgive me, I tried my best. In solo we have three very prominent picks. Guan Yu with five picks, King Arthur with four picks and Achilles with three picks. Keep in mind that Achilles got a small buff in the bonus balance, Guan Yu got a nerf in this patch, which they are playing on, and King Arthur got an indirect buff through Blue Stone's buffs as well. While Guan Yu got a lot of picks and also had two bans, that doesn't mean that he won every single game. He is a strong pick, but at least the early game lane bullies can still put him behind by so much that they can have more impact on the game. The other picks we saw here were Sun Wukong, Kukulin, Hercules and Tyr. So very clearly ability focused meta. Interestingly, not much Kukulin anymore. The primary starter item was Bluestone by far. There were a few late game Bamba's hammers after a boot start, but that was almost an outlier and Bluestone was what everyone used basically. Other starters were just completely ignored in comparison. As I said in my Smite Challenger circuit video, I think the buffs were a little bit too much. An item that we saw outside of that was Spectral Armor, this was picked up quite a lot. This makes sense because crit is coming back and we'll get to that when we get to the hunters. There was an interesting build for Sun Wukong which was Bluestone Pendant, Warrior Tabai, Gladiator Shield, Soul Eater, Genji Scarred and Shifter Shield, which are in themselves standard items for Sun Wukong, but the combination of them meant that it was a very low defense, very high aggression build and it worked out. Mail of Renewal, which recently got a buff and a lot of people thought was very strong, was picked up exactly once and that wasn't even in the laning phase. 
It was built on King Arthur, I think, by Fine Okay, and he built Stone of Gaia first, and then in the very, very late game, long after the landing phase, he swapped it out for Mail of Renewal. In jungle, we saw some very spicy things. The most picked guard, with three picks and a ban, was Sir Cat. Keep in mind that Set was banned three times though, and picked two times, so technically he's still a little bit more popular. But Sir Cat is most certainly a surprise pick here, and she won every single game. In the first game she was played, a Willish was banned, so that she wouldn't get hard countered. And then after that, that wasn't even a concern. A Willish wasn't even banned, and she wasn't even picked into healing. She was picked as a counter to Set once, which makes sense because her ult is very good against his ultimate. But other than that, she didn't really seem to be a counter pick, but just considered a strong pick. The builds that were used were very bruiser focused, and this works pretty well on her because the scaling on her ultimate was increased from 55 to 70 percent, so she doesn't really need to go into pen for example, if we're talking about the ult specifically. If she goes items that have defense and power, they'll still get the job done, so we even saw stuff like Runeforge Hammer. What's interesting is that she was still mostly built with Bamba's Hammer, despite that kind of counteracting her own passive. I guess the cooldown resets for constant mobility are just valued more, which makes sense. And on the topic of spicy picks, Loki was also picked twice. It didn't go too well for him, but I would say that in both cases, it wasn't really the Loki that was the issue on the team, his stats were actually decent, it was rather that the better team won against the not so prepared team. So I'm very curious to see if we'll see more of him maybe from other teams as well. The other guards that got two picks were Tsukuyomi and Naja. Naja didn't do too well just yet, and outside of that, Nemesis, Ao Kuang, Athena, Thanatos and Osiris were picked. Ao Kuang is someone that we saw banned a lot in the SCC. In the SPL he doesn't seem to do quite as well. It's the same build, again with the Eye of the Jungle and mostly power and then telekines at some point, but even that wasn't enough. Osiris on the other hand was more than enough and look at this build as well. This is what it looked like in late game, the item that you can't see that well is Ancile. So it was a very low attack speed build that still had stone cutting sword in there, dominance, as well as kins. But on the other hand it had bambas and decent defense, meaning he would be able to stay in a fight very long and get a lot of quick basic attack reset through abilities and ability resets through the bambas procs, meaning he would still get a lot of basic attacks through overall. So I think this is a very very interesting combination for a build. The most big guards in middle so far were, unsurprisingly, Janos, and surprisingly, Kuku Khan with three picks each. And so far, Kuku Khan has won every single game. He is one of the builds that was ran in that, so if you want to try him out, I think that's one that I haven't really seen being played much that is very valued in the Pro League, where it's obviously a little bit easier to coordinate things for his ultimate, but if the pros value him so much, I would say he is probably generally usable as well. We had two Morrigan, two Ragen, and two Scylla picks, no surprise here at all and one Persephone pick, but he was also priority banned three times. The more spicy picks here were a Heimdall pick, a Kronos pick, and a Poseidon pick. Unfortunately, none of them did well. But I think especially the Kronos build is worth highlighting because it was a rod start trying to get into Bamba's hammer later. It just didn't quite work out, but it's definitely an interesting one. I've heard about this build before because you get very quick resets on basically his entire combo, and I think it's fun to try out at least. In terms of items we see a lot of Sands of Time here, as well as Conduit Gem, and Conduit Gem gets upgraded to Gem of Focus now, even on gods like Ragen or Scylla. Outside of that, as I said with Kronos, the no starter rod start also still exists. All in all, not too many crazy changes here, in support we see a little bit more new things. Sobik was the top contender here with 4 picks and his 3 bands, no surprise there really, but we saw 3 Bacchus picks. Keep in mind that Bacchus was buffed quite significantly, but so far his showing in the SPL hasn't really been all that great. Ymir was also picked three times, and then there was a Emoja pick, a Horus pick, Xing Tian pick, Artyu pick, Gap and Ares pick. This is kind of similar to the FCC where we saw a lot of variety in the support picks overall. This is kind of reflective of that, that at the moment because the build that most supports use is so universal, you can use most supports with it as well and utilize them well somehow. The preferred starter is Sentinel's Blessing still, but Benevolence is most certainly taking on a lot more traction. With the recent Compassion buff, the pros seem to value it more, and it also benefits you in specific stats. Well, in the SCC we saw a lot of players opting into Glowing Emerald along with their starter and then just get some pots, 
In the SPL, the preferred start is most certainly a starter plus boots. Then along with that you'll get hog and you'll either get some pots or primarily still chalice. Seems that the pros here value the mobility much more. While there aren't really any spicy surprises in support, there most certainly are in carry. The most picked ADC was Anher with 5 picks. Following him were Chernobog and Heimdall with 3 picks and only then we see Apollo with 2 picks. So he's valued significantly less, though he is still valued and still got a ban as well. In addition to that, we also had one Shivalanke and one Jing Wei pick. Guess who also got picked and banned once? Danzaburo. However, that was after pretty much every other high tier ADC had been banned away. He lost his only game, but his stats were okay at least. More importantly, Gilded Arrow was used a lot more. Death Toll was used a tiny bit, but Gilded Arrow was most certainly the stronger contender. There were builds that just included one other crit item like Rage and then Ikaival as well and most other builds included double or triple crit plus the Ornate Arrow upgrade. To be fair, this item got massive buffs so it's not exactly a shocker. There was also a very interesting strategy with Heimdall which I hadn't seen before, I'm sure Heimdall mains are familiar with it, which was starting with his 3 and using that on the purple camp initially but then doing red with the mid laner and using the teleport to teleport over to purple buff in order to make it to lane in time after clearing both buffs. I thought that was very interesting and something worth trying out if you're playing Heimdall. But that's not all, there was also a crazy amount of new starting strategies with pretty much every role starting in different places from before. Some of that stuff makes me really happy and I want to talk more about that in a future video that didn't fit into this one because of time constraints but that's coming soon. So if you want to see that, click like and subscribe, or I will go to my garage, hide in the corner, stay. Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. That includes that Nick Walker, Donald Dryden, Melancholy Ganger, Dwayne Brennan, Lanta25Green, Zed the Undead, Nevis Jr., Rawas, and everyone else you see here.